Today's video will be about the Mineral Washington murders, also known as the Tubesock killings. The murders happened on August 12, 1985 and December 12, 1985. Now let's start with the first victims. 27-year-old Stephen Harkins and his 42-year-old girlfriend, Ruth Cooper, were going on a weekend camping trip at Toll Lake, which is near Tacoma, Washington. But on August 14th, when they didn't show up to work, their employees decided to report them missing to police, and within four days, police found their campsite. In it, they found Ruth and Stephen's dog shot, and they also found Stephen's body still in a sleeping bag. Police assumed that he was shot while he was still asleep, and after searching the area, nobody could find Ruth. And Ruth wouldn't be found till two months later on October 26, one mile and a half from the campsite. Police assumed what killed her was a single gunshot wound to the stomach, and she also had a tube sock tied around her neck, which was their best piece of evidence. But with no leads or anything following, the case ended up going cold. The next victims would be Michael Reiner, who was 36 years old, and his 21-year-old girlfriend, Dinah Robertson. Police assumed that they were killed on December 12, 1989, because that same day, their daughter was found in a Kmart parking lot alone. Their two-year-old daughter, Crystal, was found 20 miles away from they were murdered in a Kmart parking lot. Police know someone had to drop her off, but they can never find out who was it that did. Police questioned the Kmart employees. Nobody remembers seeing anything. All they remember seeing was Crystal walking around by herself. But at that time, police didn't know what happened. They just assumed they found a two-year-old girl who was probably lost, so they put pictures of Crystal all over the newspapers, seeing if someone could recognize her and hoping they could find her. But two days later, someone would recognize Crystal, and it would be her grandmother from Diana's side. She would fly to where Crystal was, and she would ask the police, where are Michael and Diana? And the police would say they had no idea. They don't even know what the little girl's name is. So right there, Crystal's grandmother went to go ask her, Crystal, where are your parents? And she said the only thing Crystal told her was, Mommy's in the trees. With that being their only evidence and not knowing where Michael and Diana were, Crystal's grandmother would tell police where Michael and Diana lived and what truck they drove, and also how Michael was actually a trapper and he would trap animals near the Mesquali River in Washington. With that information, they started looking for Michael and Diana. They first went to their house to see if anybody was there, and they found nothing. So they started making search parties to go look for them in the woods, and after weeks of searching, they still didn't find anything. Even after using planes to fly over the woods to see if they could see anything, they found no evidence of seeing Michael and Diana. But they wouldn't find anything until two months later when a man walking his dog would see Michael's truck in the woods. He said he noticed a truck because it had a whole bunch of snow on top of it when it hadn't snowed within the past couple of days. So after calling out to see if anybody was nearby, he decided to go check inside and make sure the owner of the truck was okay. When he went to the window, he looked inside, and the first thing he noticed was blood on the passenger seat. He said he was so frightened, he backed away quickly, and he ran to the nearest payphone he could find to call the police. When police arrived, they knew immediately that was Michael's truck. So they went to the check inside, make sure like they didn't find any more evidence, and they did. They found an envelope saying, I love you, Diana. With that evidence, they knew for a fact that was Michael's truck, so they started searching the area, seeing if they could find Michael or Diana. Hopefully, they could find them alive, but they were also worried they'd find their bodies. After immediately searching the area, they would actually end up finding Diana. She was buried under a couple inches of snow, and she was stabbed 17 times, and she even had a tube sock tied around her neck, the same way Ruth did, even with the exact same nodding on it. And now police know why Crystal was saying, Mommy's in the trees. And the police started thinking, what about Michael? His body wasn't found in the area, so where could he be? And after the media started re looking into Michael and realizing what kind of person he was, it's easy to tell why they started making him the number one suspect. But after the media and the police would see what kind of person Michael was, it's easy to see why they thought that he would be the number one suspect. I mean, Michael was known for having a temper, and actually in October of that same year, Diana actually had to put a restraining order on him because he broke down their door and threw her onto the floor. And police think he killed Ruth and Steven just simply because they were in his area, since their camp was also around a whole bunch of his traps. Not a really good reason, but it was their best they can give. And to the reason why he didn't kill Crystal is maybe he just didn't have it in him to kill his own daughter, so he dropped her off in a town hoping that someone could grab her and take her to safety. And his reason for killing Diana, well, it could be for many reasons. I mean, statistics show that from 1980 to 2005, one out of five murders were committed by couples in an intimate relationship. But even with this so-called evidence and theories about Michael Reiner being the killer, they couldn't find him. 
and the police just assume that he's either living off in the woods or he made it to another city and started a new life, maybe in a different state or even a different country. That is until 2011 when they found a new piece of evidence of Michael Rainer being found. They found his partial skull and his jawbone a mile and a half from where Dinah's body was. And after looking at the bones, they could confirm that Michael was most likely killed in 1989, the same year Diana was killed. But people started asking questions. Why wasn't Michael's body found when they were looking for him in 1989? And police started saying, most likely he was actually buried and that's why they couldn't find his body at all. Now, what if this got police thinking? What if they weren't dealing with just some random murders? What if they were actually dealing with a serial killer? Because from 1989 to the most recent being in 2004, four of the couples were killed in the same area. The only thing is, none of them had a tube sock tied around their neck. But what if the killer started getting smart and started thinking that they, he would be connected by that? So he threw away that whole idea and just killed people, making people think these are just random murders happening in the area. Even the police think now that they were actually dealing with a serial killer this entire time, there's still no new evidence on these murders, and there most likely won't be any, unless there's still something buried under those woods that nobody's found yet. And to this day, nobody can identify who killed Ruth and Diane, Michael and Steven, and so that means the cases are still left open. Thank y'all for watching this video, and please like and subscribe.